Lần tiên. Well, good morning again. Uh, welcome to our second webinar for today. So um, today's webinar is on the stock crossing bylaw for 2022. I'll just run for you a few um, rules going forward. So the house rules of uh, Zoom. So just be patient and courteous to one another as we use this technology in a public meeting situation. If you have got some questions, please use the Q&A function to ask those questions and just use the chat function if you just want to leave or make a quick comment that doesn't require an answer. Uh, once a question is answered by either myself uh, or one of the panellists, we'll move it to the answer tab. Uh, you'll also be um, able to um, raise your hand if you wish to speak to us at any stage throughout this process. Uh, but, but also be warned that this has been recorded and will be available for the public to view. So once again, Mayor Toby Adams, Hauraki District Council, I'm joined today with Plains Ward Chair Ross Harris and Councillor for the Waihi Ward, Duncan Smeaton. So on today's agenda, we're going to go through the uh, Franklin District Council Livestock on Roads Bylaw 2010. We'll go through our proposed stock crossing bylaw 2022, uh, stock crossing permits, what they mean, stock underpasses, what is our timeline, how you can provide some feedback, and any questions that we have at the end. Okay, so um, we already have a Franklin District Council uh, Livestock and Roads Bylaw from 2010. Um, so this bylaw is in place for the Porikawa Coast area, and it was made by the ex-Franklin District Council. And this currently applies only to the ex-Franklin District Council area. So we're proposing to revoke this or remove this historical bylaw because it makes sense to have all areas of the, of the district under one bylaw which is our proposed stock crossing bylaw 2022, which we'll explore now. Thanks, Duncan. So what is this bylaw? We're reviewing our stock crossing bylaws because we haven't reviewed it since 2007. So a lot of times passed since then. It contains rules for crossing stock across and along our roads, not state highways. So just our local urban and country roads, rural roads. The bylaw is in place to protect the safety of our road and our users, and also to reduce damage on our roads. We're proposing some new requirements in our draft bylaw, and we're here and happy to talk you through some of these changes. Thank you, Mayor Toby. Stock crossing permits. Our existing bylaw requires all stock crossings to have a permit. We haven't enforced this in the past. We propose that most roads won't require a permit as long as minimum safety conditions are met. Some types of roads will require a permit, depending on how often you cross stock. If you cannot meet the minimum safety conditions for stock crossing, you will also need a permit. So here's a little bit of a table about how it can look uh, for the end user on would they or would they not require a permit. So as you can see, um, the table shown in gold, that's where you would require or need a permit, and in green, uh, you would not need a permit. So, And we have a list of roads on our website if you'd like to check out the requirements for that specific road. Okay, so uh, you won't need a permit when the following conditions apply. The road is unsealed with less than seven crossings on average per week, or the road is a sealed rural road, but with fewer than 200 vehicles per day, and you expect less than five crossings on average per week. The bylaw conditions are met regarding site, as long as the bylaw conditions are met regarding sight lines, safety, and protection of the road surface. These conditions include things like high visibility vests being worn by people on the road, some advanced warning signs provided, stock are not moved during darkness, and the crossing is maintained and the road kept clean after crossing. So if you satisfy those, you won't need a permit. So when will you need a permit? So if your road is shaded gold in the table for the average number of crossings you make, you'll need a permit. You'll also need a permit if you cannot meet the conditions that, we've, uh, that Duncan uh, alluded to in the previous slide, e.g. for some reason you cannot provide advance warning. We may ask you to apply for a permit if we receive complaints about your crossing, for instance, if the road is being damaged or if there's excess, um, excessive excess effluent is left on the side of the road. The permit application fee is proposed at $250 and that permit would be valid for up to five years. Permit conditions. Conditions imposed on a stock crossing permit may include things like days or dates and times that stock may be moved, areas designated as rest or overnight areas, 
the number of drovers required to be present during the movement. We may require the permit holder to provide proof that it holds an acceptable public liability insurance policy or any other form of indemnity. The payment of costs of any work on a road need to facilitate the passage of the move stock or reinstatement damage caused by move stock or the removal of stock effluent from the road. Uh, so inspections of crossings. We may need to inspect stock crossings, roads and or the environment to check if the bylaw has been breached for one, confirm the stock crossing permit conditions are being met uh, as set out in your application and validate information contained in any stock crossing permit applications. And based on those inspections, we could require you to apply for a stock crossing permit decline or revoke or suspend your current permit applications. Okay, so what happens if you breach your permit? We will ask you to explain why your permit shouldn't be revoked or suspended. After your explanation, or if you don't respond, we could revoke the permit or change the conditions. And if you've damaged the road, you may be required to pay the cost of repairing that damage. If the bylaw requires you to have a permit and you don't apply for one, you could also be liable to a fine of up to $1,000. So stock underpasses. So we're not proposing any major changes to the current bylaw requirement for underpasses. If stock movements exceed the limits in the bylaw, we may require that you construct an underpass. The underpass would need to meet the requirements of the council, obviously. When an underpass is built under our road, the underpass is vested in the council and we have the ongoing structural maintenance uh, responsibility for that activity. You may be eligible for a stock underpass subsidy towards construction if you're applying for a, to build a stock, pass, stock underpass. Inspections of underpasses. All stock underpasses must be approved by council and we will inspect them during construction. We could require a structural inspection of a stock underpass to check its safety. This would be done at council costs. We'd let you know no less than 48 hours prior to that inspection date. Access to the underpass must be allowed by the landowner if requested. So what is the timeline? Uh, so we, we've got a lot out of there at the moment. So uh, please provide us with feedback um, from now until the 20th of June. Uh, that closes off at 4 p.m. on the 20th of June. On the 13th of July, we'll hear some of that feedback. On the 29th of July, Council will consider the final bylaw. Uh, and from the 29th of July, we'll prepare and implement the bylaw. This will, will include writing to those who might need a permit. And from 1 September, the bylaw will be in effect. How can you provide us feedback? Well, there's many ways to do that. One is on our We Need to Talk Hauraki website page, or you can email us at info at hauraki.dc.govt.nz. You can print out the form and post them to us. You can go to the office or our libraries or our, one of our service centres and pick up a copy of those. Uh, you can also put um, your messages on our official Facebook page and we'll take those into consideration. But please don't hesitate just to contact one of us or any staff member at Council and we can help you put those thoughts down on paper for you so that you get listened to. Uh, we obviously get um, have issues and that's why we need to come up with bylaws uh, and have that process, but we really need to hear from those that are out there using it and for those that are um, road users going through those to provide us the feedback so we can provide the best solutions for everybody so that we've got good, clean, fixed roads uh, and everyone's safe, whether it be a human being or your stock. Uh, we've had a few questions come in, um, a couple of questions come in, and I'll ask those now. And if there are any questions from our attendees online, please don't hesitate to ask a question in the Q&A function. We, we encourage that. So um, a question for you, Ross. Why fix something that isn't broken? Well, Mayor Toby, uh, it may not appear broken, but we are seeing damage to our roads where stock are being crossed, which means increasing costs to the rate part to repair. We also receive numerous complaints from drivers about effluent on their vehicles. At the moment, we have a bylaw that requires all stock crossings to have a permit, and none have permits. This proposal seeks to reach a happy medium where stringent rules and increasing costs to damage uh, due to damage. Uh, and in fact, Mayor Toby, uh, coming into Pyro from home, we ha I have two uh, quite major stock crossings that uh, uh, cross both uh, Kaihiri Road and Ferry Road, Kurapihi. Both of those crossings have been managed really, really well in the last 18 months with uh, stock crossing mats and the like signages there. And those two, uh, and those two incidents, uh, I doubt whether 
uh, a permit uh, a permit will be required, but it will be quite easy to do just on application. So a question for, for you, Duncan, um, being a dairy farmer, mm -hmm. uh, cows don't damage roads. Why are you penalising farmers? It's, it's a, we always get a question about penalising farmers, and it's, it's not about penalising anybody, is it? Well, of course, it's quite hard to penalise cows, but that's a rather simplistic answer, so <laughs> we can't say that. But the effluent from cows does damage roads, I'm afraid. Especially regular crossings, they do eventually damage the roads. And this is evident when you look at where the stock cross in areas where, and then in other areas where the road is kept clean. The damage can be seen with the effluent trailers while the surrounding road seal is not damaged. I'm afraid it's that simple. Thanks, uh, Duncan. And we've got a um, question uh, online. Uh, so it says the green roads, so those are in that uh, earlier chart. How is the less than 200 cars a day measured? Uh, we've got uh, already extensive knowledge on vehicle movement across all our roads throughout the district. But if there is a particular road where we need to measure it and get a, a more accurate, up-to-date, um, it's easy to put a traffic count measure in place um, to ensure that we've got the right information because um, we don't want to penalise or make it harder for people where, where there are less than the 200 cars a day. So hopefully that answers your question there. Is there any other questions from, from some of our online attendees? Um, if not, um, once again, uh, if you think of something else or a question that you may have um, after watching this currently live or gone to the recorded site on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel and have a question, don't hesitate, pick up the phone, um, crack open your laptop, flick us an email with your question, ring any one of us, councillors, Mia, myself, um, any one of the councillors within your area and we're happy to provide those answers for you. Um, or go online into one of our service centres, fill out a submission form and be part of the process and you can come and sit along uh, with us at Council when we hear all those and uh, hear how we make our decisions. Uh, we'd, we'd like to encourage that as much as we can. So if there's no other questions, uh, we'll leave you with that and thank you uh, for those that joined us online and those that are watching at a later date. Really appreciate you tuning in and seeing what we're doing. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and have a glorious weekend for this long weekend. Thanks. Cheers. <clears throat>